Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another Self-Publishing Insiders with draft to digital And uh, this is uh, this is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a good one. I'm talking to somebody. This is the wonder, by the way. The wonders of technology. Allow me to talk to uh, Sean Loftus, who's uh, going to be chatting with us about Indie Uncon. Uh, and you're way over there uh, in Tuscany, you said. On the other side of the world, pretty much, and that's uh, I, I. I just imagine that there are a lot, quite a few very jealous authors right now, um, uh, because Tuscany is at one of those places we all dream of. That's where we're going to all retire to one day when our books really hit it and take off. And you actually, uh, you could have a hand in helping some of these authors get to that, right? Because that's that's part of your background. Yep, and I, I even have a spare room if they want to come visit. So. Careful what you uh, careful what you put out there. You you could have quite a few authors just dropping by. <laughs> it's good they're good company. So you are. Um, I'm looking at your website, and you actually have a couple of them. I've stumbled across uh, while I was kind of doing some research on you. But you you have some author services. We'll get we're going to get to the meat of this, by the way, in a little bit. Everybody, okay. uh, we will talk about Indian Conference. But first, I want. I want to get to know Sean a little because this you and I haven't had a chance to meet before. Uh, Dan oh, sure. always bogarts the trips to to uh, Italy, so I don't I haven't been in your neck of the woods yet for a conference. <laughs> well, you're welcome anytime. By the and way, you have I a have room, a spare bedroom. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So tell me a little about what uh, what you offer to the author community. Okay, let's, let's we... get some of your history too. I don't I don't know much about you. Um, my history. Oh, my goodness. I come from, on one hand, a background in theater and directing and dramaturgy. And because theater doesn't pay, I also started coding and learning marketing. And so I was a very early adopter in marketing and, and data analysis and email marketing. And so at some point, someone reached out to me and asked me to market their book and could I do it? And I said, sure. I didn't know anything, but <laughs> I figured I knew a lot. And so I learned on this one book from hiring cover designers to editing because I did the developmental editing on it, um, which was, it, it was a book about first century Christianity, and I'm a big nerd, so I actually knew stuff about it. So I did the dev edit. I hired Jane Dixon Smith for our cover design. I followed David Gogren's Let's Get Digital like it was holy writ. <laughs> Good plan. And, <laughs> and I had a very generous client who just wanted to get read. He didn't need to make money, and yeah. we had a hit. That little book was number one for it was the mystery of Julia Piscopa and it was number one for a very long time. And then I had met Ricardo and I had met David Gogren and they both kind of encouraged me to start building a portfolio. Yeah. So I reached out to everyone who I knew wrote books and I said, listen, I work cheap. Let me learn on your book. <laughs> cheap. I'm really cheap. Yeah. And so I learned everything uh, with these early clients from the ground up. And um, then I got in demand and I hired one person and then another person. And now we're a team of six. Wow. Um, each of us with different specialties. And we work with authors anywhere from uh, debut to we've got authors who are uh, New York Times bestsellers, uh, uh, USA Today bestsellers who are um, hybrid with both, you know, published and indie. Um, and we handle everything from whatever they need. So we will go through and find editors or we will do proofreading in-house. If it's something we know about, we'll step in to help them edit. We arrange for their cover designers. Um, we show them what genres they need to be in. We handle the back end, the technical, setting up their Facebook if they need it, building websites, um, running their AMS dashboards, their Facebook dashboards, their promotions. Um, and we're, it, it's a fee for service. We don't take parts of, uh, we don't take royalties because yeah. we're not a publishing house. Right. But we do what a publishing house is supposed to do if you're with a publisher. 
What, so, what publishing houses used, used to, to do. do. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and you still do, you and your team still do some book marketing and promotion. Uh, we, that it's it's intrinsic. We do. We'll take a project from from manuscript all the way through release and ongoing marketing. Okay. Um, so we do. I spend a lot of days just in the Am, uh, Amazon Ads dashboard or in the back end of Facebook. We've got two graphic designers on staff to create the constant ads and social media ads. So we free up. Um, we help authors who don't know what they're doing to learn how to do it. And we work with established authors who just, they'd rather write and yeah. they don't really like marketing. So <clears throat> that seems like, well, I was going to say that seems like most authors, but the, the reality is there is a group of us who just dig in on the marketing and, you know, that almost becomes the, the work and the books are just supplemental to that. I think for some of us. I've heard rumors <laughs> that there's authors who just ghost out their books and do the marketing. Yeah. So that is interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to bring up anybody who might be doing that though. <laughs> I, I don't know any of them personally, but I've heard rumors. I, so. I, I think I know a couple. I, I, I haven't confirmed it. I think I know a couple of authors who do that. And there's actually really nothing wrong with that. You know, no. they're, they're building a, a business around a product. And I think that that's great. I, I welcome authors of all stripes. Whatever, whatever gets you here. That's, that's what we're here for. Uh, sounds like you do too, actually. So that's uh, such an interesting origin story, by the way, because you just started, you started in a completely different area and didn't have any intention to do this at all. And now it's your career. Yeah. And, and it's, um, it's grown and I've been, I've been really lucky because there's the people who come from other countries to Italy tend to be really amazing. So I've got these awesome people who work with me. My team is, I, I can't say enough about them and their talent. And, and they love this job. They love working with authors. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a happy place here. Yeah. And do you, so is that, are your clientele, are they primarily uh, European? Are you, do you have a region? Globally. I, right. I've got clients in Washington, California, Texas, New York, Germany, France, <laughs> Austria, Italy, um, Portugal, and Thailand. Wow. Are they all English speaker? Is yeah. English speaking well, authors? Okay. We have we have a few authors who actually write in German, a couple who write in Italian. And so we do handle books on the foreign marketplaces as well, because one, one of the people who works with me, she speaks five languages. Yeah. Um, well, and okay. so at least well enough to negotiate things like keywords and categories and communications yeah. in, in those languages. So is your team, are they all located They're in, all here. in Italy? Okay. That's There's, good. Uh, one one person we work with is in South Africa, but the rest of us are here. Okay, that's 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 good. Knowing most people aren't going to be able to just drop by uh, and and chat with you if you're in Italy. Um, oh, if they want to, I have. Oh, they can. You have a room. room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> before the uh, before the show is over, we'll have to post your address uh, on screen <laughs> so people can drop by anytime they feel like it. Um, so. Okay, uh, we we need to get to. There's so many things I think we could probably talk about, but I want to make sure that we are covering the topic of the episode. Uh, so let's let's jump into that for a second. So, tell me what the heck an indie unconference is. Okay, I had this memorized before we started chatting. An unconference is a conference that is peer directed. So rather than having someone come and speak and tell you things, you, the authors or scientists or team, they set the agenda, they brainstorm together. People who want to, for example, discuss Facebook or the ins and outs of historical fiction, they can have breakout sessions after okay. the morning session and they can go discuss those topics that are most pertinent to say their genre or what they're interested in. So rather than being a top-down hierarchy, it's very much peer-to-peer -peer information sharing. 
And in this case, we're bringing in experts, not as presenters, but as moderators there to answer authors' questions. Um, so I've been to conferences and I've been to unconferences. Unconferences are a lot more fun um, because it's livelier. It's um, everybody has a say. And no matter how brilliant uh, a publishing guru might be, he or she doesn't write necessarily in all genres. So they right. might have information valuable to their own genre but not necessarily applicable to romance or World War II fiction. Um, and so by getting authors together and allowing them to exchange information, they come up with their own best practices, group by group, genre by genre, and oh, they good. meet lifelong connections. Um, Elizabeth Jennings founded this unconference un and I believe was in, uh, helped implement the one in San Francisco as well. Um, and lifelong friendships are born because she has come at this with, it's about generosity, it's about giving, it's about mentoring each other, it's about helping each other. Um, other authors aren't really your competition because people read more than one book a month or one right. book a year. There's, they're not going to only buy one book. They're going to want to read dozens, hopefully hundreds of books a year. And so it really is important for authors to help each other to help the entire industry. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's an interesting approach. And I, I, I can honestly, I don't think I've actually been to an unconference now that, now that I know what it is. Uh, so I'm going to have to attend one. And you said there's one in San Francisco. So that's. There a is a San Francisco on conference as well. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I think you've convinced me to check that out. So um, now the one that's that, you guys host or that you've put together. Uh, so what's the sort of origin story there? Like what, what made you decide that was necessary? Um, well, I wish, I wish Lizzie was here. She's not, wasn't available today. It started <laughs> um, a few years ago and it was supposed to be annual. And then, well, the world. Things happened. The yeah. world <laughs> things happened. And before that she was um, uh, involved in the women, international women's, festival women's fiction festival yep. that was also hosted in Matera. So Elizabeth has been around a long time helping authors and she just wanted to do the unconference because it's kind of who she is. Right. Uh, and so we're hoping to grow this year to year. Uh, it needs to be by its nature. You can imagine it needs to stay relatively small because you can't yeah. do an unconference with 500 people, but Challenge accepted. Pardon me? <laughs> Challenge accepted. No, no, I'm not going to. Could you imagine Morning Circle with 500 people? I, right. I'm not sure about that. But, yeah, we could try. Um, yeah, well, give it a shot. And uh, Elizabeth lives in Matera, which um, I know that no one knows where this is, but you should. It should be on your bucket list. It is. Uh, it was in 2019 the European Center for Culture. It's a UNESCO heritage site. It is probably the um, the most continually populated place on the planet. It's been occupied since the Paleolithic era. Wow. If you saw, saw the latest James Bond film, that, yeah. was, that was filmed there. Um, um, pretty much all the movies about Jesus are filmed there because there's caves and it looks like ancient Israel. That's where some of the uh, earliest cave paintings have been found. Yes. Yeah. And it is glorious. It looks like one of those little Christmas balls that you shake up and there's this crash with, you know, Jesus and, and, and the shepherds. And it is gloriously beautiful. Wow. Just a and the food, food's amazing. Yeah. Well, who would have thought that someplace in Italy would be beautiful? That's that's fairly surprising. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have to ask. By the way, what? How did you end up? I don't know where you're from originally, but it does. You don't sound Italian. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, so, how did you end up in 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 Italy? Um, I came on vacation. Okay, and just never and I left. stayed. <laughs> 
<laughs> I That's... fell in love. I have a big Italian family. Okay. All right. That's me and the Hilton. I just showed up one day, never checked out. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, you know, I, we actually have a couple of people commenting and asking questions. I, I I can pop one up. We can take a look real quick. Sure. Uh, so we have this question from Jeremy on uh, via Facebook. It says, what do you find to be the hardest part of the process for new writers just starting out? Ah, managing your expectations. Um <laughs> A career, I mean, there's exceptions. Sometimes a career can be built on one book. Sometimes your first and only book can hit it out of the ballpark and pay your rent for years to come. But okay. in reality, it's a career like any other career. And there's an amount of learning and dues paying and reading and talking to other authors um, and knowing your genres. So the, the biggest thing is, is really, really controlling your expectations and being very reasonable about what you can spend. Um, make sure to invest in editing. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Do not skimp on your editing or your yeah. book cover, even if you have to take a second job scrubbing floors. Yeah, speaking of editing, I have to make a correction to a verbal typo I made. Because I said Jeremy, and I meant, I should have said Jenny. I didn't Jenny. mean Jenny because my eyes told me it was Jeremy. I apologize, Jenny. Uh, but uh, sorry about that. Oh, <laughs> and eyes. the one other part of the process is make sure that whatever you're writing, if you want that book to sell, make sure that you've kind of got an understanding of what genres are competitive for indie authors. Yeah. Um, a poetry book is, is worth being published but it's not going to make you money and a genre that's dominated like literary fiction or women's fiction it it's 6000 books a day that you have to sell to make it to the amazon charts so yeah. make sure that you're writing to a market that you can compete in yeah so. that's true um and i i never want to discourage people from from publishing just whatever's on their heart you know and and poetry is one of those where um, there are a lot of people who really just they really want to be out there. They want that voice to be out there. Uh, but I think you're right. I mean, managing expectations, there's not a huge market for poetry, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. No, right? absolutely not. And if you write women's fiction, by all means, write it. Just yeah. understand that you're competing head to head with Random House if you're writing women's fiction and right. they're hard to beat. They have more money than us. That's true. But see, that's the that's the beauty, though, of self-publishing is that it takes fewer readers for us to be, we'll say, financially successful. Yes. Than it takes for an author going through a, a traditional publishing house because we get a bigger royalty on sale. So what the key comes down to finding that specific market that's going to love your book. Exactly. Do you have tips for that? You, you, you help with marketing. Do you have some tips for authors on that? Uh, yes. Um, we use extensively two products. We use Kalytics. Okay. Um, we subscribe to Kalytics. We read all of the market reports. We look at the videos every month. So we really know the markets and who's selling what in which genre. The other thing that we use, this is before we'll even accept a client, is we will look at Publisher Rocket. Publisher Rocket will tell you how well any genre is doing, how many, and will help you pick out of the 28,000 genres on Amazon. And you want to find a balance of something that, that you know, 100, 150 books a day will get you into the top 10. Yeah. So it's robust, but not too competitive. So those are really easy um, and, and Publisher Rocket is really quite affordable. Yeah. Um, but anyone really considering how do I adjust my manuscript to hit a market, Publisher Rocket, fantastic product. Yeah. Love it. Uh, I, Dave Chesson, a friend of show, friend of company. Uh, we've had him on a couple of times and uh, 
and uh, he and I have shared beverages at um, various conferences, and that is a remarkable product from a remarkable guy. So, um, highly recommended. Um, here's another question. Let's pop it up. Uh, so, I'm going to lean in to make sure I read your name correctly. But Roderick uh, coming at us from uh, Facebook. So, uh, how can one balance between a day job, family, and writing? with all that comes with it. Do you have any advice for him on that? Um, it depends on what your goals are. I, I know authors who do it. I yeah. absolutely have clients who do this. <laughs> My husband is a writer. He's a novelist. It, he'll write for three or four years. Um, I have another good friend and client who really, he did it when the baby was asleep and when yeah. he got up in the morning. Um, and he did it just day by day. He hit maybe a thousand words a day on good days. Yeah. Got his books written. Keep in mind a, a thousand books a day, uh, a thousand words a day. You've got your book written in a couple of months. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it, it's, it can be done. Um, the indie market often it's kind of dominated by women. So they're managing their families, they're working, yeah. they're getting their books written. And if your book is successful, the, the author I just said, he wrote when his baby was asleep, he quit his day job this month. Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, I tell authors all the time, it, it, you know, it kind of sometimes it comes down to getting creative with your writing time when when you can do it and how you can do it. Uh you know, Michael Laron is a good example of somebody who he writes on his phone when he's on a train, on on in in line at the grocery, whatever. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities. Dictation software. Yes, and a Some lot of people, authors are doing that. I haven't successfully done that yet. I'm I'm not particularly great at it either, but I know authors who do it. Yeah, and. So that's also a way to get more time, but it absolutely can be done. I know a ton of authors who've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's always, that's a tough question uh, to really answer from someone though, because it's, it really comes down to your personal circumstances. Like, you know, how do you balance it all? Well, you know, what is it you're having to balance? Cause some people are going to have a tougher time at that than others, you know, it, it's easy for us to say, you know, use that time when the baby's sleeping or use the time when you're on your way to work or whatever. But, you know, a lot of times people have challenges we can't even account for. And however, 200 words a day, 300 words a day. Yeah. It's a paragraph a day. It's how my husband writes. Right. Um, that's because he's fussy, though, not because he has time. <laughs> so, um, so do you edit your husband's work? No, he writes in Italian. Okay. So <laughs> that's interesting. Who does he use? He's not uh, he's not using the in the in-house business. Um, not <laughs> not for the editing. No, besides which he's he's my husband and we'd worked together for some number of years and we had yeah. even co-written together um a screenplay that went almost got made, but we found that perhaps working together was yeah, we like each other better <laughs> when we're not. Maybe a little. I understand. So. <laughs> my my wife Kara and I were uh, not only did we live in a van together for two years, so like a less than a hundred square feet uh, of living space, but we were also at the time both working for Draft to Digital, so we were never apart ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I don't mind not being apart, but there's. Did she work for you? No, we perp that was a uh, thankfully everyone was smart enough to make sure she worked in a different department from me. So uh, we would go. occasionally have to overlap and and sometimes there were little sparks there, but uh, we learned how to do it though. But you know, working with your spouse, that's a tough that's a that's a subject for a whole other uh, broadcast, really. I liked it. <laughs> it was good, but gosh, that was a lot of work too. I bet. I bet. <laughs> Is he is he kind of, is he demanding or are you more demanding? Oh, Which of you is the demanding one? That's the that's the question. Oh, we're we're both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that's no good. You have to have one of you has to be laid back and the other one has to be. No, when it comes driven. to matters of art, kind yeah. of things. No, we both have very strong opinions. 
Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that, and uh, yeah, we don't give in easily on our arguments when it comes to yeah. creative endeavors. So I hear you. <laughs> so um, when it comes to developmental editing, is there, do you have like a process that you go through? Is there, you know, is there a formula for that sort of thing? Uh, usually we will find someone, a developmental editor. I'll only take a project if it's something that, that I'm specifically in love with and knowledgeable about. Um, I love history. I love research. Anything that I can jump down that rabbit hole, yeah, I might work on. But there's people who do it full time, um, time after time. And most of them are going to be better than me. Um, and it, it depends. We're working on a historical project right now that's set in Italy. And we are developmentally editing that. But we don't generally, we, we have so many hours in the day and we've got, I think, 30, 35 clients. And of those 35 clients, we've probably got 200, 250 books. Wow. So, so to developmentally edit something is so such an intensive project. Yeah. We generally look for somebody. But our process is, is to go paragraph by paragraph tease out the details specifically note i believe this i don't believe this this isn't convincing find wow. a different way to say that we're pretty when we do dev editing we're pretty intense to work with um because we're trying to make the book wonderful and not necessarily right. please the client yeah. um so and that's also can be really i think touchy especially for newer authors Right. That relationship has to be filled with trust and intimacy. It has to be a close relationship because your your editor should be saying things that might hurt your feelings. It's their job <laughs> yeah. because they're trying to make your book better. Yeah. That's uh and and that's it's one of those things where it, we all say we want the book to be the best it can be. But there is a cost to that. <laughs> So, you have so to be able to kill your darlings, and that's hard. Yeah. Um, and so we we don't really focus on that. We we do it if it's the right project and the right client. But yeah. we we don't really. If you saw my website, we don't offer that upfront. Yeah, and that is um, by the way, I I have found your both your personal site and your. I'm assuming this is the business site, the Book Whisperer, correct? The book, uh, bookwhisper.ink. Book, bookwhisper.ink. And we will be putting links. In fact, I can go ahead and pop them up now. It, but um, Let me make sure you've got that right. Let's see, let's see if we got it. I put both of them. SeanLoftus.com. No, no, you don't, don't want both? Don't SeanLoftus.com because That's I never you. go there. I know, but I haven't updated it. That's your site. Okay. Well, I, I will know. edit that. <laughs> I will take that down. Uh, but let's see. We'll take it. In fact, look at the magic of technology. I'm just doing it right now. There, there we go. Now, Sean, Sean, I left out um, a word. See, bad editing on the fly. You don't edit on the fly. That's what. That's what you're. That's what you should tell authors. And my email address is authors at bookwhisper .inc. Okay. And um, it's probably easier to write me there or find me on Facebook. Yeah. So that, and this is where they'll find access to all the services you guys offer. Right. You, and you said it's more of a, it's sort of all folded in, but can someone come to you for a specific thing? Like if they just wanted the marketing, do they have to go through the other uh, aspects of your business? Um, it, it really depends. We try and meet our clients where they're at. Yeah. Some authors will come to us and they've already got game. They already yeah. absolutely know what they're doing. Yeah. They just don't want to do it. Um, right. You're right. <laughs> Other authors will come and they'll say these these books they're failing. Why? And then we try our best to find out why. And there's any number of reasons. Um, also, oh, by the way, and also you guys can find me on Readz. So, so I was good. That's what I, I was going to ask you next. Was you because you talk about Readz on on your site at least? I haven't I haven't really had a chance to look through 
the book whisperer site for everything, but you, uh, so you're still registered on Reedsy. Yes. Is that one of the ways that people kind of come yes. to you as client? Yes, okay. absolutely. They How's that experience? Pick. Cause I, we love Ricardo and we love Reedsy. Um, um I, now you can give me the inside scoop. They <laughs> the crack inside. a whip on you. The... <laughs> not, not particularly. Um, uh, they've been really great to work with. In yeah. fact, they, they recommend, they tend to recommend the right clients to me at this point because they, they know who I'm going to do well with. Yeah. I think, um, I get a lot of requests through Reedsy. Um, I really only even talk to people that I think I can help. Um, yeah. and I, I try really hard not to take on clients. I don't think I can help. It's, it's hard. I want to help everyone. Yeah. But I'm thinking, no, no dinosaur romance. I don't think I. <laughs> There's an editor out there for that dinosaur <laughs> romance novel, but you're not the editor. And I mean, uh, you'll find me in the as a marketer on Reedsy. Okay. So, what do you what do you prefer? What's your preferred genre? I like historical fiction. It's the one with the strongest yeah. hand. It's the one we have. We have, we've got a stack of authors who are bestsellers in that genre. Oh, so, wow. um, because I of also, you, I don't know if it's because <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm not sure. I know that that it's one the one genre I will say yes. I can probably help you yeah. rather than please remember <laughs> manage your expectations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's yeah. So that's uh. I imagine kind of, now I think my, so I write archeological thrillers, which Ooh. I tend to label as historical uh, thrillers on uh, Amazon because uh, there is no, there's no category for archeological thrillers there. Amazon uh, and elsewhere, not historical just historical fiction, historical fiction. Yeah. Ancient historical, ancient historical fiction. Yes. Okay. All right. Is that a, that's probably a good one because I bet there's not a lot of competition in that. There's genre. not. I've got a I've got a book in there right now that I think last time I looked was in the top ten. Um, okay. So ancient historical mystery, historical mystery is a very good category. It's yeah. robust but still competitive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Noted. I will take your free advice. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, speaking of free advice, we have, uh, someone I think who's aspiring to kind of get into your line of work here. Uh, Adriana from, uh, YouTube asks, what services or marketing would you recommend newbie editors get into? I'm not sure I understand the question. I kind of um, read it as if they were an editor who wanted to sort of do the sorts of things you're doing for their clients, what would they focus on? What mark, what sort of marketing techniques should they focus on or services? That's how I read it. Adrian, if uh, I'm wrong, correct me. I'll, I will correct the record. If you're new, I would say look to Reedsy yeah. um, to find new clients. Let them do the marketing for you. Build your portfolio. I have gotten back in the day, I got work off Upwork, but on Upwork, clients don't really want to pay you enough. No, they period. don't. <laughs> yeah. I ran a copywriting business for years and uh, Upwork is where you go when you are just, you just need a few bucks here or there. That's not a, uh, it's not a career builder. <laughs> no, but if, if you're needing your portfolio built, the, the first thing really is to build your portfolio, um, become very active on social media within groups, talk to other people and, um, if, if you if you haven't a book or two edited yet, get that down. If you do a good job, editors are in high demand. Authors talk. Authors will recommend. When yeah. I need an editor on a project, I'm calling my clients and saying, who's editing you? Yeah. Do you have names? Give me a recommendation. They, they talk. And so you want to make friends with authors. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um especially if, if authors are your clientele, <laughs> well, so. <laughs> you know, when, once you build a reputation, they'll recommend you to other people um, yeah. because they want you, if, if you're their editor, they want you fed. Yeah. They don't want you to quit and go take a day job. So. Right. Exactly. Cause then you're not available anymore. <laughs> so um, I want to circle back 
to uh, unconference for a second, Indy unconference, because you got one coming up. With, uh, I had it up on my screen, and I've since navigated it away. But you got one coming up soonish, right? Let's see. Yes. June. Yeah. June 9th to nice. 12th. Yeah. Um, it's going to be fantastic. Um, Reads is hosting the Welcome Aperitivo. Um, oh, nice. Amazon is hosting the Goodbye Dinner, and there'll be a, a draft of digital smash words will be there. Reedsy will be there. Yeah. Um, Alex uh, from Kalytics is going to be doing a presentation for us. Um, Book Bob, I believe, will be doing a presentation. Okay. I, I think at this point, there's about 45, 50 confirmations. Um, we'll be live streaming part of it. Um, KDP and Amazon ads will be there. So this is this is really important because everyone, oh, I don't know how to do Amazon ads. Yeah, They're going to be there. You can yell at them in person about right. their platform. <laughs> they won't listen, but you can yell. Well, at least face to face. Um, and... <laughs> And actually, they're actually really lovely people. And yeah. there's going to be a focus on best practices for Amazon ads and Amazon KDP. Um, particularly, this is particularly good for authors who want to start getting their foot into the European marketplace because people here read books. Yeah, yeah. Um, there will be, I know in attendance will be some translators um, so you can discuss that. I think good. Find a Way Voices will be there. I'm not sure. Um, so, and I think the the event is a hundred euro. You know, your price is travel, but the the event is, you know, four days, several pretty, meals. Pretty inexpensive for hundred euro that sort of thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Getting uh, there, not so much from the U.S. anyway. But, uh, well, yeah, it's kind of late, but yeah. I think you have listeners and you've got a lot of listeners and there's a lot of Anglo writers in yeah. France, Italy, yeah. Germany, Spain, Portugal. Um, yeah. And so for those authors. Hey, look, I think most of us will use any excuse we can get to go to Italy. So we're fine. We're going to I know out. that there's a lot of people going to Madrid the week before and yes. London the week later. So, right. So anyone who's doing both of those events, we're right in the middle. Okay. There you go. Yeah. You're a nice stopover. You're like literally yes. in the middle. Really? Right? Well, not Pretty exactly. It's sort of. It's kind of a cross. And There's a little bit still. of a, what is it? Like a left turn from Madrid to, you and, know. And you can <laughs> even, uh, if you go on Airbnb, you can even book a cave. You can sleep in a cave. What? Yes. Okay. They, they they rebuilt the Sassy, and there's a lot of apartments and houses built right into the caves, and you can you can book one of those. So if you're not going to stay with Sean in her spare yeah. bedroom, well, I'm in Tuscany. In I'll cave. be in Matera. So that's okay. All right. Well, so a, a hike. How far is that from you? For me, um, three hundred, four hundred kilometers. Okay. It's about a seven hour drive, but that's yeah. because it's twisty turning it. If okay. I flew, it's 20 minutes. Like I live in Texas. Everything is 300 kilometers from, from where <laughs> exactly. I am. So I, I'm, a, I'm accustomed to the long commutes. Um, great. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm scanning through comments here. I'm not seeing questions per se, but I am seeing some people commenting um, on uh, some of the things we've said so far. Uh, so... And then, so David Ballerini, that name sound familiar to you? Yes. <laughs> is, he, is he leaving me messages? He's, he's popped in. He sent hugs earlier. Uh, oh. Now he says it's like 700 to 800 kilometers is the, is the distance. So I, I, I didn't pop this up earlier, but uh, there we are. There's David's sending hugs. Uh, that's why I moved to Italy. For David. I oh, want to move to, to Italy for David now. <laughs> <laughs> Italian men are lovely. I, I, I have heard that. That's the long-standing rumor, and it's yes. good to see uh, David proving that true. Um, so, oh, Lexi Green, our own Alexis, pops in to say wholesome content on this week's DDD Live. Wholesome and heartwarming. The Italian family story is what we've got going on here. And I, I endorse that. I am fine with that. So um, cool. All right. Well, so 
we're kind of getting on towards uh, time to wrap up, which I know you're probably relieved by because you didn't you didn't want to do the live stream. I'm a to, bit camera shy, yes. You shouldn't be, though. You've been fantastic. You're wonderful on camera. And I really want to, before we, because I really want to invite everyone to this Uncon. It is going to be awesome. It's indie-uncon.eu. Let me see if I can pop that up. So it's, it's it, oh man, it's going to, it's going to fight me. It's indie-uncon.eu. EU. EU. Correct. Okay. All right. So check it out, everybody. And Indy. you can find it on Facebook. And even if you can't come this year, there's friend me. I'll invite you to the private group because there are about 300 amazing authors there always chatting and we will be doing it again next year. Good. Good. And in, hopefully in person, it looks like it all worked out. You're getting to do it in person plus virtually. That's good. Our own uh, Dan Wood is going to be uh, present at this one. Uh, and I am looking forward to seeing him again. Yeah. Now I'll have to get out there. I, I, I know he, 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 t he tends to Bogart the overseas uh, beautiful location ones. Uh, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to assert some sort of will over this and get out there and see you next time. So, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. We're going to figure it out. Of course, if I if I don't take my wife, I end up divorced. That's that's why these trips are expensive to me. You know, so. <laughs> it's a really romantic place, so it, you should bring your wife. Yes, it's I fun. will. I will, uh, or I will uh, pretend like I'm flying to San Francisco or something, and and <laughs> just let her hang out. Um, okay, I'd never do that to her. Uh, so that is going to be it uh, for for this episode, and I'm really glad uh, we had a chance to chat with you. I'm sorry that we haven't met before now, but I'm now I consider you a lifelong friend and uh, I'm a big fan of your husband as well. I'm not his type of man though. He says I'm not his type. So uh, fair enough, David. Uh, I won't let that hurt my feelings or anything, uh, but I am on screen right now. For those of you who are listening, you don't see it, but uh, if you go to indie-uncon.eu, that's where you can find tickets. Uh, or for, where you can uh, RSVP and uh, attend the UnCon. Uh, and that ought to be a good time for you. And you can find Sean at bookwhisperer.inc. That is a very cool domain name. Uh, Sean, anything else you want to throw in before we wrap up? Uh, no, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, you're always welcome. We'll have you on again. We'll do this again. Uh, okay. I, uh, you did perfect. So don't, don't. <laughs> Don't hesitate. Camera loves you. Thank uh, you, Kevin. So for everyone else, uh, thank you so much for being a part of this as well. Be sure you like and subscribe wherever you're watching right now. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, make sure that you uh, hit little bell icons, all the things you need in order to know when we're going to be, be doing any of these in the future. And make sure you bookmark d2dlive.com where you will hear about uh, these things you'll see countdowns to the next live event we got another live event coming up next week and that one's actually one of our webinars we pre-record those so uh, we'll the bunch of us will be in the comments to answer your questions uh, so tune in for that webinar if you're listening to the podcast you've already missed it but uh, you can find those on youtube and at ddlive.com so again sean thank you so much for being on the show everyone else thank you for tuning in and we'll see you all next time. Take care.